Great, so we're here at the World Creators Summit and I'm here with the Director General of the International Confederation of Societies uh, of Authors and uh, Composers, which is a CISAC, and uh, it's uh, Olivier Hinewinkel. Uh, so hi Olivier and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Doing very well. We had a uh, first uh, great day at the World uh, Creators Summit. Yeah. You know that we are well into the second day and uh, so far so good. Yeah, so, so unless far, there are some uh, bad news, which I don't uh, suppose uh, there will be, we will yeah. have a very great summit here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, going, it's going really well. And so uh, the World Creators Summit is the first one under this uh, new name. Uh, but the event, uh, of course, uh, had been running uh, biannually uh, beforehand, known as the World Copyright Summit. So what was the aim of the event when it first uh, started? And, uh, you know, how has it progressed over the years? It is very important to gather the industry players. By industry players, I mean all partners, not only collective management organizations, not only publishers, uh, but also the DSPs, also the ISPs, the technology uh, companies, etc., etc. And uh, if I may, the reason for the change of the name between World Copyright Summit and for the first time now World Creators Summit is that, uh, quite frankly, without the creators we would not be here. So they deserve to be at the center, at the heart, and to be the leaders of the promotion of copyright, which is what it is about. Yeah, and so we're seeing this. Uh, still seeing a fair amount of conflict, uh, uh, or at the very least, animosity. Uh, we can call it between the technology industry and the creators, uh, and that's come through in some of the panels that we've seen today. So, uh, but at the same time, you know, they are trying to work things out. So, do you see a light at the end of the tunnel in this debate? There is light at the end of the tunnel. We just hope it's not a train coming our direction. Um, more seriously, I think that um, you're absolutely right in saying that when partners or when um, when people that work on the same landscape um, have to enter into business discussions, there can be conflicts. However, what we are keen on is to just make sure that the fundamentals are respected. Yeah. And the fundamentals are copyright. It is all about giving the creators the possibility to do where their work. And as Paul Williams said this morning, be able to pay their phone bills, their rent and their food. I don't think that many tech companies, as you said, are against this. We need to explain it to them. They need to come further to us. And somewhere in the middle, I'm sure that we will find agreements. Yeah, sure. And the CISAC, of course, uh, gathers uh, a, a great number of different uh, uh, types of creative uh, uh, people. And so, of course, here we see a big representation by the music industry, by the uh, photographers, uh, artists, uh, uh, movie makers. And, and, and so, uh, of course, it's it's a huge amount of expertise that's required to manage uh, the expectations and also the, uh, the the issues of all these different parties. Uh, you know, how, how do you, how do you handle that? At CISAC, what we have is a centralized structure and decentralized structures in the various regions of the world. World, sorry. Uh, what we do have is a is an expertise that is centralized, and we also count on the societies in each repertoire, which is music, audiovisual, as you said, but also graphic arts, paintings, sculptures, photography, literature. Um, we count on specialists in these areas to help us develop the copyright trends that are helping the creators to get their fair remunerations for their work. So really what you want to see is CISAC as being an umbrella organization. It's the only worldwide umbrella organization. We have 231 members. We have over 3 million creators. It's the only um, organization that has that. And it is within this that we find the expertise and the experience. Yeah, sure. And uh, a Congresswoman Asho yesterday made a really good point uh, talking about uh, how the, she, she called for the creative industries to pull together and to really uh, try and sort things out amongst themselves before they start uh, you know, uh, going to Congress uh, with their concerns because that, of course, makes it a lot easier for Congress to understand what direction they should be taking and it makes it more effective of a measure. So do, do you think that's uh, something that we're going to see more of in the future? Yeah. I think that uh, she was talking about the United States and she's, represented, yeah. she's representing Silicon Valley. Yeah. So it's very important to put this in perspective. From her perspective, she says technology and content have to somehow find a way to bridge gaps. I totally agree to this. I, however, want to make sure that we have a clear understanding as to what we are talking about here. A technology company that spends millions in protecting its own intellectual property, its own patents, make it Samsung, make it Google, should respect the copyright of others. 
If you are keen on your copyright to protect your rights, your intellectual property, you need to make sure that you respect equally the copyright of the creators in the cultural industries. As long as this happens, I'm sure that we will find a solution. Yeah. Yeah. You have a very interesting background in, in, in television as well. And so how have you seen uh, that medium uh, being affected by things like copyright infringement? And uh, you know, there are, I guess because the television industry is still doing pretty well, uh, it's maybe less concerned about things like piracy. I mean, we've seen the producers of uh, the, the, the show Game of Thrones say that they were flattered by the amount of illegal fire sharing of, of a show. So, so why do you think TV is still not quite as affected by, by this phenomenon? T television is a very specific animal. Uh, radio has evolved already. Uh, the, 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 the digitalization of, uh, of our medias have changed the scenery in many uh, areas of the world. But a TV set is still in each living room. So the traditional behavior towards television from a viewer's standpoint still remains and while of course television has evolved already and will evolve to a, a new way of living television um, connecting to the internet etc etc I think that the traditional television still has some uh, some uh, good days ahead which means that you are in a world where piracy is more difficult um, Bridging this towards the, the, the new era of television, which is the digitalized television, the television that you can find on many medias, there, of course, you again have to work on copyright and copyright infringement because it's just very easy to copy and paste, to take pieces of a movie, to take, and these movies have to. Um, the, those, sorry, that take the content have to comply with the rules. If you are the movie maker, would you like to see your movie sliced? No. Maybe the person that wants to take a piece of your movie has a brilliant idea and maybe you'll agree to it. But you need to at least be asked if you agree to this. And if the person uses this for a commercial uh, objective, then you should be getting some money too, because at the end of the day, you were the creator. So that's what we need to look into. And uh, finally, talking about uh, the role of CISAC and its uh, visibility as well, what do you think are the next steps uh, for the organizations? And uh, uh, do you feel like uh, it, it, it also needs to become more visible? Because I've, I've spoken to a few people in the last couple of days that uh, weren't even that aware exactly of what CISAC was before coming to the summit. Sure. International organizations have this capacity to be at the same time very active and at the, the same time fairly discreet. Why? Because we are and have mostly been a sort of B2B organization uh, for specialists. So I don't think that the guy in the street necessarily knows who CISAC is. Experts very well do know who CISAC is. So we have to work towards this. We have to work towards being more visible in order to be more effective. Where we need to be very effective is in three areas. Um, we are working and have developed a strategy to be effective and present in international debates on copyright. But that's not enough. Put our weight and it's a big weight, 3 million creators, 231 societies. Put our weight when copyright changes. We are very present in China, for example. Make sure that when copyright does not respect the fundamental rights, we are in litigation, which is the case in India, for example. So copyright and copyright policy is one of the key elements of CISAC. The second key element, if I may say, is governance. You know, some collective management organizations have been attacked in the past because lack of transparency, etc., etc. Those that say this are actually saying something that is wrong for one simple reason. When you go to our website, you will see that we have binding resolutions and professional rules. We are the only worldwide organization in our area of activity that has this. What does it mean? It means that if a member doesn't comply with the professional rules and the binding resolutions, that member cannot stay within CISAC. And this governance model that we thrive towards is something that is very important and shows the excellence of these collective management organizations from a business, process and also governance perspective. 
The final element where we are very present as an international organization is the identifiers and the standards. So it's quite technical, but it is to make sure that the societies, when they exchange information within uh, themselves or with publishers or with other entities, that these societies actually use identifiers and standards that are up to the task and future proof. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time, and uh, I hope you have a very enjoyable rest of uh, the uh, summit. And uh, um, it's been a very uh, successful event, so congratulations on that. Thank you. It was a pleasure, and thanks for your kind invitation. <laughs>